join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. History has a strange way of remembering. It lifts some figures high into the air, enshrining them as pioneers and innovators, while quietly burying others beneath layers of silence. When we speak of plastics, the material that defines our modern world, the names that usually come to mind are Alexander Parks with his invention of Park Sign, John Wesley Hyatt with Celluloid, and Leo Bakelin with Bakelite. These men are remembered in museums, textbooks, and industry archives as the fathers of plastics. Yet there is another story that has been systematically erased, one that forces us to confront the uncomfortable truth of how race shaped the way history recorded scientific genius. Beneath the foundation of the plastic revolution lies the forgotten contribution of a black chemist, a man whose name should have been written into every history of modern chemistry, but instead was marginalized, overlooked, and hidden behind the veil of racial prejudice. His story reminds us that the creation of plastics, one of the most transformative inventions of the industrial and scientific age, was not only a product of European laboratories, but also the brilliance of black scientific minds whose legacies were stolen. To understand how this erasure took place, we must look at the broader context of the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when the field of industrial chemistry was undergoing seismic change. The modern world was hungry for new materials. Natural resources like ivory, tortoiseshell, and horn were scarce, expensive, and ethically problematic even in their own time. Factories needed something stronger, cheaper, and more versatile than wood or metals alone. Chemistry promised solutions, and the age of synthetic materials dawned. But this was also an era when black intellectuals, inventors, and scientists faced systematic barriers. Even when they broke through, their work was often co-opted, their patents challenged, their credits stripped, and their achievements buried under the weight of racial bias. The story of modern plastics cannot be told without mentioning the research of Dr. Frederick McKinley Jones, better known for his refrigeration patents, and Dr. George Washington Carver, the agricultural chemist whose experiments with peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potatoes unlocked pathways toward biodegradable plastics and resins. Carver, in particular, is an example of how history narrowed a black chemist's genius to a caricature. Most Americans learn of Carver as the peanut man, a kindly agricultural scientist who gave farmers alternative uses for crops. But what is deliberately omitted is that Carver was at the cutting edge of polymer chemistry, developing bio-based plastics decades before the petroleum industry monopolized the field. His laboratory at Tuskegee Institute in the 1920s and 1930s was producing plastics, adhesives, and even synthetic rubber. He was in conversation with Henry Ford himself, who in 1940 unveiled a soybean car, whose panels were made from Carver's agricultural plastics. Ford openly admitted that Carver's research had inspired him, and Carver was photographed striking the panels of the plastic body car with an axe to demonstrate its durability. Yet, this remarkable episode is rarely told as part of the standard narrative of plastics. Instead, Carver is remembered as a quaint, folksy agricultural figure, while Bakelin's Bakelite and later DuPont's Nylon are celebrated as the turning points. Why was Carver's role minimized? The answer lies not in science, but in the politics of race. The mainstream industrial establishment of the early 20th century was reluctant to acknowledge that a black scientist in the segregated South could pioneer material science at the same level as European chemists. Carver published little in scientific journals not because he lacked rigor, but because the scientific establishment often refused in platforms. His research, distributed through Tuskegee bulletins and agricultural reports, was dismissed by white chemists who sought to exclude black scholars from professional societies. Yet when industrialists like Ford saw the value in his work, they engaged with him privately, benefiting from his insights while history erased him from the patent record. Carver's plastics, resins, and adhesives predated the petroleum-based explosion of synthetic polymers, but because they were derived from crops and not fossil fuels, they were written off as side curiosities. In truth, they were the earliest blueprint for the bioplastics revolution of today, where scientists are once again seeking renewable alternatives to petroleum-based plastics. 
What Carver did in his Tuskegee lab anticipated the 21st century, yet textbooks barely mention it. But Carver was not alone. The field of polymer chemistry also owes its debt to the overlooked experiments of black chemists like Dr. Walter Lincoln Hawkins, whose career at Bell Laboratories in the mid-20th century further advanced plastics into practical everyday use. Hawkins, one of the first African-American scientists at Bell Labs, invented a polymer coating that protected telephone cables from environmental damage. Before his innovation, polyethylene insulated wires were prone to cracking under exposure to sunlight and weathering. Hawkins solved this problem by adding stabilizers to the polymer, creating durable plastic coatings that allowed telecommunications infrastructure to expand globally. Without Hawkins' contribution, the spread of telephone service into rural areas and across continents would have been severely hampered. Plastics became not only a matter of convenience but a backbone of communication technology, and Hawkins' work was essential. Yet his name, too is missing from the grand story of plastics, overshadowed by white contemporaries whose contributions were celebrated in industrial journals and corporate histories. The erasure of black chemists from the story of plastics reflects a larger pattern of scientific exclusion. In the 19th century, patents filed by African-American inventors were often stolen or contested by white counterparts. When patents were filed successfully, Newspapers and industrialists often attributed the work to employers or institutions rather than to the black scientists themselves. Even in academia, where scientific prestige was built on publishing papers, black chemists faced systematic denial of access to journals, conferences, and professional societies. Those who did publish often found their work ignored, plagiarized, or reframed through white colleagues. Thus, the official history of plastics was curated to highlight certain names while omitting others who did not fit the racial hierarchy of the time. To understand how deeply the erasure runs, consider that when plastics became a global industry after World War II, the narrative was streamlined to emphasize wartime necessity and post-war consumer boom. Nylon stockings, Tupperware, and polystyrene were marketed as miracles of modern chemistry. The corporations that dominated plastics, DuPont, Dow, and General Electric, framed themselves as the sole pioneers of innovation. Within this industrial mythology, there was no room to credit Carver's agricultural plastics or Hawkins' polymer stabilizers. The story was told in a way that reinforced the narrative of white industrial progress, leaving black chemists as marginal figures, if they were mentioned at all. This selective memory not only deprived these scientists of recognition, but also distorted the history of chemistry itself, narrowing it into a Euro-American industrial tale rather than a more global and inclusive account. Yet when we re-examine the record with honest eyes, the truth becomes clear. Plastics as we know them today were not solely the brainchild of white chemists in European or American corporate labs. They were also the result of black chemists working in agricultural stations, university laboratories, and industrial research centers, often under hostile conditions that sought to minimize their brilliance. George Washington Carver, experimenting with resins and plastics from peanuts and soybeans, provided a renewable vision for material science that was ignored until the 21st century. Walter Lincoln Hawkins revolutionized the durability of polymer coatings, making possible the telecommunications network of the modern world. Countless unnamed black laboratory workers in chemical plants and universities contributed to experiments whose credit went to their white supervisors. Their fingerprints are all over the birth of modern plastics, even if the official story erased them. What makes this story so urgent is not merely the injustice of the past, but the way it continues to shape the present. By erasing black chemists from the narrative of plastics, History not only denied them personal recognition, but also reinforced the false idea that scientific genius is racially exclusive. This distortion still echoes in the underrepresentation of black students in STEM fields today, where stereotypes about who belongs in science persist. Recovering the erased legacy of black chemists is therefore more than an act of historical justice. It is a necessary correction that expands our understanding of how innovation happens. Science has always been a collaborative, multicultural endeavor, even if history books tried to suggest otherwise. The irony is that the very field that erased these chemists is now circling back to their vision. 
As the world confronts a plastics crisis, with petroleum-based polymers choking oceans and overwhelming landfills, scientists are once again turning to plant-based bioplastics as a sustainable solution. In other words, the future of plastics may look very much like the past envisioned by Carver in his Tuskegee laboratory. Modern researchers working with biodegradable plastics are, knowingly or unknowingly, following the trail he blazed a century ago. If history had recognized his role, Carver might have been celebrated not only as an agricultural chemist but as the father of sustainable plastics. Instead, that recognition is only now beginning to surface in scholarly reevaluations long after his lifetime. The silence surrounding black chemists in the history of plastics is therefore not an accident, but a reflection of structural racism that shaped which stories were told and which were buried. To restore this history requires not just acknowledging names like Carver and Hawkins, but fundamentally rewriting the way we tell the story of science. It requires us to look beyond patents, corporate records, and industrial propaganda to see the laboratories of Tuskegee, the research centers that quietly employed black chemists, and the intellectual contributions that were dismissed because of skin color. Only then can we tell the true story of how plastics came to define the modern age. History is not just about who invented what, but about who is remembered and who is forgotten. The black chemists who helped create modern plastics were not forgotten by accident. They were erased by design. And now more than ever, it is our responsibility to bring their names back to the surface, to honor their genius, and to recognize that the modern world is built not only on the celebrated discoveries of the few, but also on the hidden brilliance of those who were denied their rightful place in history.